Hello and welcome. It's Loretta West with Tangle Tuesday, Color Garden Studio, and I'm a certified Zen Tangle teacher and a soul collage facilitator. And today we're going to have a, a lesson that focuses on the full moon, which we had this week, which is called the worm moon. And a lot of people think it's because of the worms in the soil, the earthworms waking up and doing their thing. But actually it isn't. It's from a beetle that the grubs from the beetle are exposed coming out of the bark of the wood of the tree in the spring. So um, with that in mind, it's not going to be creepy, trust me. We're going to uh, start our lesson. You're going to need a pen, and I have a Sakura Pygmy, Pygmy, excuse me, Pygma <laughs> Sensei uh, 04. And my backup pen is a Micron PN, also by Sakura. And for a pencil, I have a little HB Zentangle pencil, but any HB or light the marking um, pencil that you have will work. Not too soft a pencil, but just a harder pencil would be good today. And um, we're going to, I wanna do some coloring today and I invite you to do the same. And I'm gonna be using my Prisma colored pencils. So I have some nice, oops, warm browns and oranges here and yellows. And uh, also a white and a blending pencil. So let me go through them. So I have a white one, which is uh, 938, and that's Prismacolor. A, a yellowed orange, 1002. a Spanish orange, 1003, a canary yellow, 916, a yellow ochre, 942, an pumpkin orange, 1032, little pencils, hmm. uh, sienna brown, 945, and a black grape, 996. And I do have a Prismacolor blending pencil, which I may or may not use. They are kind of, what's the word I wanna use? Not too creamy compared to the white pencils, so I tend not to use it too much, but I might today. Okay, you're also going to need something to draw on, to do your tangles on. And you have a choice today. You can use a drawing paper like I have, which is a Strathmore mixed media paper I'm going to be using with a vellum surface. This one is five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. Or you can use a square piece of paper like a Zentangle tile, which is three and a half inches square and do it on the square. Or you can use a round tile, a Zendala tile. And today I'm going to use my paper so that it's nice and big. I've done it on Zendala. It worked out really well as well. I have not done it on the square tile, but if you wish to, you can. And just forego this part, which is the circle bit. Um, so I like to use a CD for a template for circles because they're so handy. They're just the right size. They're just a little bit bigger than a Zendala, you know, maybe by an eighth of an inch, but they are a really handy thing to have. And you could also use um, a big cup, a big jar, anything you've got that's fairly large. So this is about, let's see, let's put some measuring on it. This is about four and three quarters inches wide. So something in that neighborhood. So you have enough space to create. Okay, so I'm gonna use this as my template. I'm taking my pencil and you could use a pen as well and um, going around the edge of it. One big swoop. 
and there you've got it. So that's my outer edge. I also want to put in the moon and I'm gonna give you a couple of options. You can utilize a, a full circle, say like this bottom of this golden paint container is about right size, it's about an inch wide. Um, and do the full full moon, show the full moon on yours. You can also show it as a partial, just like this. So you get to choose which way you want to do it. And um, yeah, so I've got three different sizes here. I also have a circle um, template. It does all sorts of different sizes of circles, but I don't know, it has disappeared. But that's a neat thing to uh, invest in if you want to. Okay, so there is an inch that would give me that size circle. Here is about an inch and a quarter, a little bigger. And then this is an inch and a half. And I think I'm going to go with the larger circle. And I'm going to do a partial moon. So I'm not measuring exactly where the center is, but I'm just eyeballing it and going, okay, roughly in the center. It doesn't have to be in the center either. It can be off to one side a little bit and your tree could bend, bend off to the side, which is kind of neat. Okay, which might be an idea hmm. for another one. Okay, but for today, I'm just going to do this. And oops, I made a little error. That's why I'm using my pencil because I've got a little bit it got away from me. My pencil got away from me. That's okay, because we're going to go over it with pen, and then I'll be erasing any errant pencil lines with my needed eraser. This original design um, came from the full moon maze mosaic that is made up every month by Zen Joy, Z-E-N, J-O-Y on Instagram and I think on Facebook. So she provides prompts for each full moon of the month and people create their full moon design using the prompts that she's given, the Zentangle prompts that she's given. Um, I don't know that she's still doing it, but you can still go online and um, do a search for full moon mosaic and see all the different creations, which are really stunning. And this one, really caught my eye. And it's by Anya Schoenfelder. She's a CZT. And uh, her website is called Harmonic Tangle. So you'll want to have a look at that. She's beautiful work. And so this is a variation of her idea, which she gave me permission to use to, with you today. All right. So before we start drawing, just take a minute to sort of relax. Let your shoulders, maybe roll your shoulders back a few times. Bring them up to the ears and all the way back down towards your back pocket. A few times one way and a few times the other way. Maybe roll your head a little bit. Let your neck break. Shake your shoulders. Make sure your feet are on the ground if you can or on some books if you can't reach the floor. And we'll begin. So I have my Pigma Sensei. And the first one involves the tangle Mukha. And Mukha, let me just show it to you, is one of those tangles that can be a little troublesome to make but you're going to come into the inside. And always towards the inside. And this one always reminds me of those little center discs that we used to put in 45 records. It just reminds me of that, that design. 
So that's Mooka. We're going to do a slight variation on it. It's not going to be the whole thing. So roughly in the center, from the center of my, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. In the center here, I'm going to start with my Pigma Sensei to draw up towards the middle. And just before I get to my circle, I'm going to come around and do a muka. I'm coming up around again. I'm going to have it joined there. It's just a tiny mint, a tiny muka. <laughs> and then we're going to come back down. I'm going to turn my paper on the side. It's easier for me to draw. But you should turn your paper to whatever is the easiest for you, whatever feels right. You might have to turn it a few different directions to say, OK, this is my position for this type of drawing, the way I'm drawing right now, or what I'm drawing. So do another one. And I'm going to try to make sure that these lines coming up are varied. And this time, we're going to sort of change the tangle to Hollis, H-O-L-L-I-S, which is another mothership Zentangle tangle. Over here again. I'm going to turn it again. And I come into my moon shape. I don't have to stay around the edge all the time. So I'm just starting on one side. So that's where the worm idea came from when I saw this. It's like, oh, this is fantastic. This is like wormy, <laughs> a little wormy. I'm going to try to make this one a little narrower. I've noticed that mine are pretty uniform here. And I'm not looking for uniform. I'm looking for different. So I'm just going to call a ball. I'm going to have this come around here. So I went up and over and up and over on those ones. And if your lines are a little wiggly, it's OK. There's no perfection here. Mine are a little wiggly this morning, as they often are as my fingers wake up. So you can decide, you know, because I still have to do this other side, just how fat your tree is going to be. Mine's pretty fat. So I'm going to start by taking these, this line and bringing it up and over and maybe have one come the other way. And carry on. Now let's go just to the side. And then coming off this, I'm going to have maybe one that comes up part way and then sticks out and has another one coming up and sticking out more square off. And this is such a lovely organic tangle combination. So it was just very natural. Just let it happen and grow off your pen. Big old friendly tree. It's got little bumps and 
things. Okay, so then I've got that's one side done. Let's work on the other side. I'm just going to restate some of these lines because they're sort of too light there. So you can go over any line that looks a little thin or skipped over. So then let's start on the other side. We'll come into this moon shape right there. A little bit there, maybe. And then we're going to put a knot in it. Purposely. Spring is in the air here. The birds are flocking. They open the windows in the morning and the air is just filled with bird song. And how delightful is that? How delightful after a winter. We're still here in winter up in Canada. We still have snow on the ground. And certainly a lot of snow up high. It's just lovely that the birds have come back again. It doesn't have to be symmetrical, your tree shape. It can be lopsided and just natural looking. So this one definitely got a, I'm just going to add a little bit more on the side here. So come back up. Join here. Maybe come up here and have some extend like that in this Hollis. Another one coming out this way. How beautiful. In just a few short minutes. Go from a blank piece of paper to something quite tangible. It's pretty amazing. And also recognizable. So take your time and get the tree the way you'd like it. How you'd like to see it. I'm just going to go in here. And where the edge of the moon is not covered by branches, and just take my pen and go over my pencil line. So if you, you know, you may have not used a template for the round moon shape, that's okay. Especially, in, and if it doesn't look quite round enough, utilizing the branches to hold the scene, hold that circle will still make it moon-like. I'm 
Okay. So then I want to go in and accentuate around the um, moon shape to really make it pop when I color it. So I'm going to go in and utilizing my pen and black in, just puddle in some black ink around the edges of the moon. also do this with colored pencil if you have a dark colored pencil you can do that utilize that instead or a dark marker dark color dark blue or dark violet I'm just going to go in and just do a little more darkness on some of these areas. And up here too. I really want that contrast. Between the lighter moon and the darkened sky. Okay, and here we are going around our Nuka shape in here. So I think I'm calling this design moon tree all right so the next part let me give you some options here. So you can, we're gonna draw an arc like this to tangle in. I have created space here on this one and I put in there is a moon inside every human being, a Rumi quote, quote. So that's one idea. You can also, this one's got two bands. I've got the one band and the other band. This is sort of like Punzel, and then this is between in here. And I have a third one. Oh, here we go. And um, or you can just do one here, and this is a variation of crescent moon in there. And I have also colored it utilizing the wallpaper technique uh, with my Prismacolor pencils, which I can demonstrate. So lots of options there. Let's carry on. So what I'm going to do is eyeball it roughly where one side and just put a little dot here. So I'll just zoom in for you. And just roughly go across. You can measure it with it. Let's see, does that look right? No, it's going to be a little higher. So I'm eyeballing, so who knows? And I'm going to line up my 
edge of my CD here as my measuring tool and where it lands on the edges, the edges here and here, I'm going to try to want it up a little higher. Draw this arc. You could also prehand it. And another one. Slightly above it. Okay. Now I've got this little tool here. It is a dusting brush, which I can use dust off my drawing. It saves using my hand, which might smear things. And uh, so I use it quite a bit, actually. You can get this. This one I got in an art supply store. I'm not sure what kind of hair this is, but it doesn't um, shed. And it works. Okay. I'm just going to go in with my kneaded eraser, which if you don't have, you want to invest in. They're not expensive, and they do the job. And just gently erase some of the um, arcs around the moon there. OK, so choices. What I love about art, it's about making choices. So much of it is like, what do I want to do? Oh, I get to do this or I get to do that. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do along here, I'm going to do betweed. Now, betweed, okay, this was Mooka, so you know. Betweed is another Zentangle.com. Mothership design. And I'll just show you just basically. So you start on one edge and do an arc, a little comma at the end, another edge, the comma, another edge, a little comma. I thought it would be lovely to put a Celtic design along here since it is March. Um, and if you want to try one, there's a good one called Celtic online. It's fairly easy, but for me, I really, uh, my brain can't get around them quick enough to teach them, <laughs> i tell you the truth. <laughs> and so, uh, especially not in the morning, but if you want to challenge yourself, that would be lovely in here. And I thought Betweed would be great because it is kind of a braided design and much easier. So we're going to start at the edge here. I'm starting my left hand side and I'm going to do a little arc and that. And the edge and there to the middle of this one. It's roughly to the middle, yeah. Not quite. And you can make it more to the middle or more to one end or the other, and it's going to change its shape by doing that. But whatever works for you. Maria Thomas has a beautiful demonstration of Betweed on the Zentangle.com website if you want to look it up and see the map, see how the master does it. Okay, now I could continue on and keep going in the same direction, but I think I'm going to go and flip it and go in this direction, go in the opposite direction. 
just because it would be fun and a different look and challenge. So if you're joining me on YouTube, please check out the Tangle Tuesday Facebook page. And on there you can be alerted of new lessons and see what other people have done and share your work there as well in a friendly environment. We also want to, if you'd like to, it'd be great if you'd like this video and subscribe to the channel, then you will be notified of any upcoming new lessons that I have. Okay, so I'm just going to go over and join these little lines. Might have to do it twice because there are some tags sticking out here. So I'm going to just make this a fatter line. Give it some depth. I'll do this one as well. This one here. You can also tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see what you've done with this design. And it's Loretta, L O R E T T A, dot West, W E S T, dot artist. Loretta, dot West, dot artist. You can also follow me there if you'd like to see what I do. What I get up to when I'm not here teaching you know, the art stuff I'm doing, which is always changing. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? And if you wanted to do another tangle on the bottom, like I did here, so I had Punzel up here and Betweed down there. Oops, you can't see that. Punzel up here, <laughs> Tweed down there, or some other design that you'd like to do. Feel free to do that. You might also want to do something in the center where the moon is, at the center of the moon. And I would suggest a tangle called Circuital. Circuital. I don't know how to say it. C I R. Q U A T O E Q U E T A L Circuital. And that would be really cool in there. But today we're going to just color our moon in. So I'm going to put my pen away and get out my yummy colors. And uh, so take a minute to get out what you'd like to do. I mean, you could use watercolor as well very easily with this. But today I'm going to use my Prismacolor pencils. The first thing I want to do is do my moon. And I'm just going to erase this line somewhat. But I don't want the graphite to be picked up by the pencil because that's what will happen. And I'm just going to take my white number 938 Prismacolor pencil and go over this whole area with the pencil on its side so it covers quickly. Back and forth and in circles. And what is that going to do? Well, that, even though you can't see it, leaves a nice soft waxy layer on the paper. So after you've done this, you'll want to go in and feel with your finger. And you can feel, compared to your paper that it's got this little 
coating on it. And if there's any areas where you don't feel that, you can go in and just finish them. Just go in there with your pencil. So you can't see that, but it's there, trust me. And I'm gonna go with my lightest color, which is the canary yellow. Number one, sorry, no, 916. And on the edge of my moon, I'm just going to lightly, with little circles, color in with this yellow. And in other areas, too, because there's lots of craters and mountains and other details on the moon that we can see with the naked eye. Okay, and the next one I'm going to take is Spanish Orange 1003. And I'm just going to go in this lightly color around the edge again. I'm going to have a darker side because we all have to have a dark side of the moon, don't we? And a lighter side. So this one's going to be a little darker on that edge. So I'm not going to add too much darker over here. And a little bit of detail in here. You'll see what happens when it comes all together. It's going to look cool. And then my next color is yellowed orange 1002. Again, I'm going to go with darker on one side. This one's got a real cheese color to it. Add some more details, little squiggles on the moon. And then coming around the bottom and then just lightly, lightly do the other side a little bit, not much. Because again, I've got my darker side. And then I have yellow ochre number 942, which is more opaque. It's quite an opaque color, which means it's darker. You can't see through it as well as you can some other colors. So it's going to get a lot more tension on this side with the opaque color. Just a little bit over here and over here. And again, I'm just going to add some Details here. It's neat sometimes when the moon's facing a certain way or we're facing the light or whatever is working that you can see the man on the moon. I always think that's so cool. Like, wow. But then I'm easily entertained. Okay, and the next color is pumpkin orange 1032. So we're just going to go in. Very lightly, I'm just very lightly. So I'm going to come back and blend this all together. Again, it's going to be a little bit darker on the left side for me. That's my left side. A little bit over here, a little bit over here. A little bit there. Some more craters. Some mountainy kind of thing. Just a random. And this will probably be the final one. Sienna, Sienna Brown, Sienna Brown, Sienna Brown, 945. And I'm going to be really dark. Kind of darker. I want this darker side of the moon. It's really getting that much darker. I'm pressing a little harder with this. This is also more of a translucent or transparent brown, so it's going to require a little more finger strength to get some color down. So a really nice warm brown. A little bit on the other side. Okay. You can see even here, I haven't blended anything and there's some squiggling going on. I can see they're all kind of in one direction, so I'm going to start adding some that are not horizontal in a few in different directions. Okay, actually, this will be the last one. 
which is Black Grape 996. Quite dark, quite a dark one. So we're just going to add, but also quite transparent. Add a little bit on my darker side. Add a little bit here and there to sort of accentuate these other marks. And over here is going to be darker because there'll be more shadow from the direct sun. Okay, so now what to do is kind of looks like it's coming along, but the white, we're going to go over with white, just using little circles. As I go over with my white pencil, number 938, and I'm just incorporating this, all these little marks, smoosh them around, smoosh it. Smooshing is an art term. So that they really, the, the darks kind of lighten up a little bit. But the big thing is you're blending this, these colors together with that. And you could use the Prismacolor Blender as well for this. Blender pencil. Just be careful with it though, because it does pick up black ink very well. Hmm, this one is very sort of looking for. This one has a lot of cheese holes in it. So I think what I'm going to do, like, whoa, it's a little more cheesy than I expected, is go over with my yellow, this lightest yellow, which was canary yellow. And just sort of tone down this dark contrast. I haven't too contrasty for my liking. It's really yellow. It's going to look like pizza now. Sometimes you win and sometimes you don't win so well. <laughs> but let's see what happens with this one. I kind of went crazy, didn't I? <laughs> oh, well. Let's just see what happens when I do the bottom, if that doesn't change it. Very pity moon. <laughs> okay. So down here, I'm going to want to do some shading. And I'm going to use this pumpkin orange, number 132. So I'm going to start here a little bit in this corner. Very lightly. And where they intersect, I'm just going to put a little bit of color. That's where the little V's are. See a V, stick some color in there. Maybe have it come down a little bit, a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go up here and do the same thing on this side. Just doing it very lightly. Tickling the paper with this pencil. While I'm doing that, I'm thinking, hmm, what can I do up here? So if I do a little more I'm just going to go back here for a sec. A little more of this color. It might tone down the pizza effect. Yeah, that's a little better. This is driving me crazy. It's a little too yellow. A little too cheese pizza for me. Could add some tomato sauce. Hmm, interesting. Back of my white over here. 
And then we'll go back to where I was. Talk about hopscotching around here, but it just caught my eye. It's like, oh, okay, I got this orange. Let's see what this pumpkin color does there. Back is it more of a whole oh, harvest moon glow. That's pretty. It's looking a lot better. Okay. I'm happier now. Now I can go back. So then here, since we had that really yellow, super yellow um, going on, I want to incorporate that down here. This canary yellow. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that to the edge of this pumpkin color. Just a little. So I want to bring that color down. It's too bright to leave on its own up there. Has to have a friend. A little harmonization, as we call that in the art world, a little harmony, color harmony. Okay, so this time I'm going to try my Prismacolor blending pencil and go in and blend these together. And also, you know, use graphite in here to do your shading. Equally beautiful. You see what it's picking up a little bit of the black ink. Thank you very much, but that's okay. Like most things in life, you just have to go with it. See what happens on the other side. This lovely quote that I've been rattling around in my head all year by Nelson Mandela, everything seems impossible until it's over. Well, it's so true. Okay. Ooh, no, I'm liking that. And if you want, you can do a little on the edge. I'm just going to do a little bit here. Just tickle, tickle, tickle it. Tickle the paper. A little shading. Do you color it the way you'd like to color it? The tools that you'd like to use. What speaks to you? And then down here, mm, mm, this, mm, what to do? Well, I've got some of this uh, black ink. This is a little thicker pen. It's a 0.5 Faber-Castell tip pen in black. And I'm just going to come down and just add some more definition here at the bottom of my tree. Give it some grounding. Not everywhere, just here and there. I'm going to try to make it as random as I can. And then maybe some more thicker lines in here, thick and thin. Give it some character, thick and thin. Make it a tree that's been around for a long, long time. It has all the markings of experience, wrinkles and cracks and the lovely bits. The ones, the marks of wisdom, the marks of wisdom. Mm 
we fight against that in our culture so much. The cult of youth. Let's give it some experience here. This is no sapling. This tree could tell stories. And then where this knot is, I'm going to do this. Now my next one, I'm thinking it would be really cool to do this on a black Zendala tile with a white pen and colored pencils. And also would be really neat, I'm thinking about, is to use some really good ink. And I have some Noodler's ink called the Heart of Darkness and paint that on where these white areas are and then take white and white ink pen or splatter some acrylic ink in white and make a starry sky around it. So that might be my next one. So I hope this is not your only one, that you do several of them so that you get familiar with this and you invite more ideas in that way. So let me show you in detail sort of what I did. So this is this one, I think I showed it before, but this one I used blue and gray Prismacolor pencils because I was looking at the moon this week and it was this bluey gray color. It's very beautiful. And then this one, I said before is with the, um, I was going to show you how to do that, the wallpaper. We shall do that. And then another one I did, the partial moon, and I added a little bit of gold right there where the heart of the mukha is. And each one different. See, look at this. I mean, you know, one is different than the other. This one doesn't have any branches coming into the moon. Nor does this one, but then I started doing that. So it's, you know, it's um, it's a process like everything else. So just quickly show you how to do wallpaper. So you need a really, really sharp pencil for this. And you could pick any, pretty much any Zentangle pattern to do it, but I'm going to use Preton. And I'm just going to do my little circles in my with my very very sharp pencil on sienna brown and you could use the same color to go over top for the shading or you could use a lighter color so i'm going to use the same color actually no, let's use this color I lie. okay pumpkin orange we're going to go over top with pumpkin orange and therefore very lightly and you can still see that you can also do it the other way so i'm going to put my pumpkin orange down and then go over it with the very sharp because my color pencil and the darker color and here i'll show it to you by utilizing the same color so this is the burnt of the sienna brown and then this over top. I think it's more subtle with the same color, but you know, it depends what you want, just how subtle you want it. So this is done with the same color, the same yellow. And so it's very subtle and a beautiful way to fill in the space. Okay, so I think with that, we are finished my cheese pizza, <laughs> my cheese pizza moon. And um, I invite you again to share your work on the Tangle Tuesday Facebook page or message me or tag me on Instagram 
loretta.west.artist. I would love to see what you do with this to get these ideas flowing and give them to other people to share. That is what art is for. It is meant to be shared. And also, if you like this video, please click like. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, that would also be wonderful. And I appreciate you very much. This Tangle Tuesday free Zoom class is the second to last one for this spring. The next one will be, I believe, on April the 4th. And I hope that you can join me there. And then there'll be a summer break. So just to keep that in mind, I will take a break until October of 2023. And uh, I hope to see you in April. Take care and enjoy.